So let's start off the year asking, at least in my opinion, a very profound question to ourselves. Do I want pleasure or do I want peace? Another way to put this is, do you really want to be happy? Now the answer may actually be no. We may not want to be happy. And that's not a moral failure. There's no right or wrong answer to any of this. It's just an exercise and and really getting honest with ourselves. So I want you to kind of go into this. Imagine you're in a in, on trial, and it's your essence, your soul, whatever you want to call it, and you're trying to make a, a case. So consider last year's evidence, and go through the year and evaluate. Uh, make your case. You know, do I really want peace? Do I really want pleasure? And play around with it. And imagine you're an objective juror, and you're trying to, you know come to some judgment with this. And if you look at the evidence, again, you may consider a few things. So think about the, your addiction to winning. Are you addicted to winning? And winning and losing are really both sides of the same coin. It's just that, you know, pleasure you feel from winning versus the pain you feel when you lose. And you can't really have one without the other. Uh, I think Byron Katie put it really well when she said, would you rather be happy or would you rather be right? And because, you know, one is kind of a version of happiness is really that peace of mind I'm talking about versus being right is more that pleasure that we get. And so when you consider what the mind does, the mind has always traditional, I mean, this is maybe its birth, it was its origins were taking sides. And you say, okay, well, what is it? What does that phrase even, where does it come from? Well, consider our ancestors and how we started dividing up the earth. To take a side was to literally draw a line on the earth and then stand on one side of it. And in all of our ancestors, that's what they did. They were making decisions which side of the line they wanted to be on. And think about the earth right now. Is there any place that you can stand that isn't on one side of one line, at least as far as the mind is concerned, because of course these are all just creations of mind. And of course there's nothing more dreadful to the mind than fence-sitting. Um, if you're one of these individuals who just like someone like Byron Katie, who just will not take a side, um, to the mind that is sort of a, um, it's, it's a sign of weakness. And that's one of the problems when we say, well I choose peace. But that feel, if the mind is going to step in and the mind's going to say, well, that's just a weak uh, position. Because if you don't make up your mind, who are you? And what if you uh, decide not to play the game of mind? Um, these are the two worlds I often talk about in my videos. The kind of left brain mind world that has uh, winning and losing. It has categories and... And, and it's all about the hero's adventure in some ways, because to have a hero, you have to have a villain and you have to have something to overcome. But there's that option, that right brain world that I often discuss that is devoid of categories. It's sort of that Zen um, response by unasking the question of which side you're on. So the only last thing I'll leave you with is that you have to be careful with this. Because when you start saying, well, I'm not going to pick a side because I'm above all that, then you really are not. Um, it's just another way to play the same game, but to kind of feel that sense of winning again by saying, I'm not going to play the game. So you have to be careful with all this. So when you go through that jury uh, kind of thought experiment, uh, be careful if you're really trying to get to the truth or if you're just trying to win.